If you actually have strong algebra skills, you ought to be able to solve this problem. Now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through the full solution in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. All right, so a lot to cover here, and the whole point of this video, right, obviously I want to teach you how to solve um, a rational equation, but the bigger picture is um, if you really want to understand something, especially in mathematics, you got to think in terms of uh, could you teach it, all right? In other words, uh, it's not a bad idea. Now, I'm not saying, hey, you want to become a teacher or a math tutor, although as a math tutor, you can make a good little side living there. But, uh, you know, you want to think in terms of, hey, I'm going to explain this to someone else. In other words, I'm going to explain this to my teacher that uh, my answer is right. In other words, you're always thinking in terms of justifying something. And if you can teach it, that means you can clearly communicate the main ideas to solve a problem. So if you truly want to master math, and of course, if you are a math student, there's no other way to approach the subject but just to kind of say, all right, I really want to understand this. Well, if you really want to understand it, there's no shortcuts, and you got to understand the big picture concepts. And hopefully, uh, your math teacher lays this out nice and neatly well, uh, during the course of instruction. Uh, now, if you're not getting good instruction, this can be confusing. Um, now, if you need good instruction, math instruction, I'll give you some recommendations here in a second. But let's go ahead and just uh, talk about, in general terms, how we solve a rational equation. And this is really critically important uh, for those of you out there that are in uh, first year algebra, second year algebra. This is an absolute critical skill. Now, there's a couple different ways here that we can solve this problem, okay? So we have two fractions here. We could add these fractions and be like, all right, I can add these up, which would be kind of adding rational expressions. And then I could have one fraction here that I could create um, a, basically a proportion and use the cross product. That's not necessarily the best way. That will likely get you in trouble. Anytime you have a rational equation, something like this, uh, the best uh, approach, okay, and I'm speaking in general terms, but almost always the best approach is going to take is to take this entire equation and multiply it by the LCD. Now, when we do that, the lowest common denominator, it's going to clear these fractions away. And then we can solve the remaining equation. And of course, there's some other steps that we would want to do. But we can't uh, multiply this equation by the LCD unless we understand how to find the LCD. Now, there's some things in here that I'm going to be skipping because this, this uh, problem uh, really uh, involves a lot of different algebra skills. If you need help with any of this stuff, check out my full algebra course, my Algebra 1 course, or my Algebra 2 course. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. If you happen to be in pre-calculus, you'll see that course down in the description um, as well. Okay, so this is the general idea. We have a rational uh, equation. We want to clear the fractions, okay? So this is kind of phase one. All right, so uh, how do we find the LCD? Well, again, our um, kind of uh, first task is to find the LCD. So to find the LCD, we want to factor the denominator. So in terms of writing the steps down, um, you know, in terms of explaining this or teaching this to someone else, you would say maybe, okay, hey, we want to find the lowest common denominator or we want to first factor the denominator. Uh, either way, you can't find the LCD unless we factor the denominators here. So we've got to factor this, uh, this, and this. And these uh, two denominators are factored, so we have to factor this. Then, once we find the LCD, we are going to clear the fractions by multiplying the entire equation by the LCD. All right, so let's focus in on these steps because the remaining steps here is the following. Once we clear... Uh, this entire rational equation by multiplying it by, clear the fractions, that is, once we multiply the LCD by this entire rational equation, we're going to have a new equation, and then we're going to solve that remaining equation, all right? Now, 
Um, once we solve that equation, uh, this uh, solution to that equation may or may not be the actual solution to the original equation. Now, this is a concept called extraneous roots because when we multiply uh, an equation, and if we're multiplying with something that has a variable in it, you can introduce extraneous solutions. And there's a lot of big concepts kind of going into this uh, solution here. And this is what I mean by a lot of people not really understanding algebra as well as they think. They'll be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take this step, this step, this step, but they don't really understand uh, why they're taking these steps. And if you're trying to learn algebra in a kind of rote manner, R-O-T-E, which is this memory wise, like, okay, I'll do step one, step two, step three. I'm not, I don't really understand what the steps are, but I know I'm just going to kind of do this as a procedure. That is not a good way to learn math. Okay. Although a lot of students uh, learn math that way and they're re somewhat successful with that. But when it gets to the more advanced challenging problems, they just don't really have the understanding because they just memorize the procedure. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. So here is our problem. So first things first, we're going to factor all the denominators and we're doing that so we can find the LCD. So right here, we can factor out the greatest common factor of 3C. So we have 3C squared minus a 6C. So I can factor out 3C. So 3C time, times C minus two is of course 3C squared minus 6C. And now I have 3C times C minus two. And I have a 3C here and I have a C minus two here. So hopefully all of you understand the LCD to be 3C times C minus 2. Now, of course, I could stop this video and we can get into a full uh, lesson on how to find the LCD, uh, even uh, how to find the LCD with numbers. Let's suppose I had like 3 over uh, 908 plus 7 over 1206. Imagine finding the LCD of those two fractions. Most people would be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't like your videos anymore. Matter of fact, I'm going to unsubscribe to you because you keep giving me these crazy problems to do. Well, listen, the procedure how to find the LCD with these two numbers is very much related to what you need to know to find the LCD with rational expressions. So again, if you don't understand arithmetic, you know, you're going to have a tough time in algebra, right? So here's the deal. If you're like, oh boy, I have a lot of review to do. I just never learned this right. That's perfectly normal. Okay. You need to be honest with yourself uh, so you can figure out what, where you need to start and where you need to strengthen your understanding. But anyways, long story short, the lowest common denominator here is 3C times C minus 2. All right, again, if you don't understand that, you got to reference those particular courses. Also, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. All right, now that we know the LCD, we're going to multiply this entire equation by the LCD because when you do that, we're going to clear away all these fractions and it's just going to make things much easier for us. So let's go ahead and uh, take the LCD, which is 3C times C minus 2, and we'll write this as a fraction because we have fractions here and we're gonna multiply the LCD by each term in the equation. All right, so we take this 3C times C minus two and we multiply it by 19 over 3C, C minus two, all these right here cross cancel. So we're left with 19. And then when I multiply 3C times uh, C minus two times one over 3C, the three C's cross cancel. So I'm left with C minus two and then 3C times C minus two times this, the C minus two's cross cancel. So I'm with 3C times two, which is 6C. Okay, so you can, you know, obviously pause the video and walk through this step by step to make sure you understand this stuff. But this is how we multiply uh, this uh, uh, term right here by all this stuff to clear the fractions. All right, so all that, uh, you know, work led us to this lovely equation right here. 19 is equal to C minus 2 plus 6C. And now we have a lovely linear equation. All right, now before we uh, solve this equation, we want to make note that we're multiplying both sides of the equation by a variable or a variable expression. When you do that, you can introduce uh, extraneous solutions. As a matter of fact, let me explain this real fast. Let's say I had X is equal to two, a lovely equation. The answer, obviously X is equal to two is two, right? That is the solution. There's nothing to do here, but let's suppose I multiply both sides of the equation by X. Now I have X squared is equal to two X, right? So X squared is equal to two X. Now this equation 
I just changed it because I multiplied um, uh, a variable by both sides of the equation. Now remember, the original answer was x is equal to 2. So 2 is the one and only solution to this equation, right? x is equal to 2. Well, x must be 2 because 2 is equal to 2. But let's take a look at what happened when I multiplied both sides of the equation by a variable. Now I have x squared is equal to 2x. So what we want to do here is uh, uh, set this equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 2x over to the other side. So now we have x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. And now I can factor out the x. So x times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now I have what they call um, the factors. These two factors, I can use something called the zero product property to solve this. So x is equal to 0 right here, and x is equal to 2. Now hopefully all of you understand what I'm doing. So this is just a basic quadratic equation. So x is equal to 2 and x is, x is equal to 0. Well, do I have any extra roots? Well, in the original equation, 2 is the right answer. So I have the right answer again. If I plug in 0, 0 is not equal to 2. So this is an extraneous or extra solution that popped up because I multiplied both sides of the equation by x. And this is what can happen. Again, most students or, or most people, you know, they may know what to do, but they don't understand why they're doing it. And you want to really immerse yourself in the subject of algebra if you truly want to be effective at it and great at it. All right, so uh, hopefully you learned something there. Now let's move on to solve this lovely basic algebra linear equation. All right, so 19 is equal to c minus 2 plus 6c. Pretty straightforward stuff here. So we're going to go ahead and combine like terms. So we have c, 6c, that's 7c. We'll add 2 to both sides of the equation. So we have 21 is equal to 7c. And then we'll divide both sides of the equation by 7. We get c is equal to 3. Now, a lot of you uh, did this uh, correct, uh, correctly Excuse me, up to this point. So you might be saying, OK, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm so ready for my nice little happy face, my A plus, my 100%. Well, if you turned in your work to me, I would be like uh, minus 10. And then you would be like, what are you talking about minus 10? Uh, you know, I, I need to switch classes. Uh, I don't want you as my teacher anymore. Well, you're not done. OK, so this right here is only a possible solution because we very well may have introduced uh, extraneous solutions. This is like you telling me, all right, I solved this equation, x is equal to zero. Well, it may or may not be. The only way to know whether, in fact, you have an extraneous solution as part of your solution set um, is to check this answer. Okay, this is not an optional thing. You must do this, and you need to understand, again, why you're doing what you're doing. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description. But they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So what we need to do is go back to the original equation and plug in uh, C or 3 for C. So we got C is equal to 3. It seems like a uh, possible pretty good answer. I mean, it's a nice, lovely number. You know, it's not a decimal or fraction, so it's not going to be that difficult to check. And we have to replace all these Cs here with a 3, and then we got to see if, in fact, the left-hand side is going to be equal to the right-hand side. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do this now. So we're going to plug in uh, a 3. Uh, we're going to replace all those Cs with 3s, and now we're just going to do a bunch of number crunching. Uh, now, <laughs> mind you, uh, at this point, a lot of you might struggle with the order of operations, right? So just don't trust your calculator. Write this stuff out step by step. All right, so 3 squared is what? 9. 9 times 3 is 27. Minus 6 times 3 is 18. 1 over 3 times 3 is 9. 2 over 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up the number crunching here. 19 over 27 and minus 18 uh, is going to be, well, let me go ahead and break it down over here. So 27 minus 18 is 9. So we have 19 over 9, and now we have 1 over 9 plus 2. Now 2 over 1, 
uh, we have to add these two fractions right here. So uh, the LCD is 9, so I'm just going to multiply both the top and the bottom of this fraction by 9. So now I have 18 over 9. Now I can add these two fractions right here, and you can see we have a good solution because 1 9th plus 18 over 9 I'm going to add the respective numerators because I have the same denominator. I have 19 over 9 over here and 19 over 9 over here. The left is equal to the right. In other words, this is a true statement. Therefore, uh, that is uh, c is equal to 3 is the actual solution. So you need to show this part of the problem. Okay. Uh, if you didn't do this, again, uh, you are just kind of guessing. You're hoping. All right. So hopefully... You know, you kind of, um, you know, absorbed at least uh, some of the things that I'm trying to highlight in this video. We covered a lot of areas, and this is a big t uh, topic because uh, to solve rational equations at this level means you have to understand factoring, LCD, et cetera, et cetera. To, to don't feel overwhelmed. Just kind of review what you need to review. But the bigger point is whatever you do in math, you got to show your work. you got to write each step, and you got to think about it in terms of, do I really know why I'm writing something down, or could I teach this? Because if you can kind of think in those terms, you are going to rapidly improve in mathematics. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.